Hey everyone, it's Tom here, Soko Sales Training, and I am so excited to have with me today my friend, fellow keynote speaker, and an advocate, advocate of human connection. So I just thought it would be really great for Simone and I to connect and to talk and just kind of dive deeper into, you know, how do you connect with people? How do you build rapport? And of course, in the context of sales, because that's what we're all about. So how can human connectivity help us in sales? So mm -hmm. my dear Simone. My dear Tom. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Thanks for joining us. I'm pumped to have you here. So um, what the heck is human connection? Okay. Well, firstly, thank you so much for having me. Um, Connection is why we are on this planet, to connect with other people, to connect better with ourselves. So connection is huge. But human connection specifically is very important because of uh, what's now happening with artificial intelligence mm. and the way the digital space is moving. Um, but connection simply, I truly believe, is being seen by another person for authentically who you are um, mm. and both seeing each other and hearing each other clearly, having that exchange. Mm. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so, so human connection is really being able to relate to someone on, on a deeper level, right? Yes. Okay. So then in a sales context, right? So we're talking, you know, our audience is like sales professionals, sales leaders, some business owners. So why on earth is having this human connection so important? Oh, I think human connection, real authentic connection is integral to persuasion. If you can authentically connect or make in a very short space of time, make a very memorable um, connection with somebody, mm. it's huge in terms of converting to a sale. And the number one way to make people connect with you is people have to feel something emotively about them. You have to move people. Once you move people, you're memorable. Yeah, I like that. So yeah. move to be memorable. That's yes, pretty cool. Thank you. So we persuade people, we become memorable by eliciting trust. Mm. And you can't get trust without being vulnerable. Mm. And that's what they don't teach you in traditional sales training. No right. one says, go and be vulnerable. Right. Right. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Be confident right? and like exactly. Infallible. So this is a totally. This is playing the very long game. Human right. connection is playing the very, very, very long game. I and like um, that. I have a. Can I share a story from my speech with you? That, Sorry, that's, no stories at all yeah. on this podcast. <laughs> um, oh, we have a few more minutes. Sure. Can okay. I jump Thank in you. In? Yes. So um, my mum was a, a teacher here at RGS, Raffles Girls School, which mm. is like the Dead Poet Society School of Singapore. Okay. okay. It's like a really, um, it's where the nation's like most impactful female minds go to be educated. Mm. And my mum's students are mega busy women. Okay. They are like politicians and ministers and uh, mm. CEOs. And during that time, my mother didn't just teach these girls, she mentored them. So they recently got in touch with me and I found out that she kind of be like bared her soul. She would bring my sister and I's little kids before mm. we migrated to Australia to her classroom for right, us to okay. meet. So she was memorable because no one else was doing that. She was asking mm. girls, how's your father's business going? I heard that the XYZ industry is doing well. Are you guys okay? Right, okay. And became very memorable to these girls. And now 40 years mm. later, they fly to Australia, 8,000 kilometers to visit her in that nursing home. Wow. Like I don't remember my secondary school teachers' right. names. So my mother was the original human connection superhero. And if we see that, it's almost a blurring mm. of the lines. We meet in a selling environment. Right. You're trying to sell to me, yeah. but I see your humanity. Right. Not as a person, the right? purpose or agenda for which you are there. Right. So connecting that way mm. um, is profound and memorable because mm -hmm. not many people are doing doing. Now, maybe I write a book one day and then everyone starts implementing it and then and then everyone's doing it and then we well, have to come up with something new. But, but you know yeah. what? I, I, I think that's going to be a long time coming, right? Not not the book, yeah. but, but the actual adoption of this concept, right? It is concept, because right? you have to risk a little piece of yourself to do it. You yeah, have to sure. risk. You have to be much more vulnerable than mm. using a stock standard sales strategy, right? You really have to go and make an effort to be interested mm -hmm. and to see the other person. And that um, that is asking for a lot, but mm. we're in a global connection crisis. So we almost have to do it mm. or be replaced by the robots mm -hmm. or people will succumb to depression, anxiety, because that's what happens as a result of disconnection. So we don't have human race. We don't have any other option but to go with this. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right because it is an epidemic. I mean, people are feeling lonely. They're feeling disconnected. It's mean, right? We, we need to actually have real human connections with people on a, on a deeper level, to be vulnerable, to be open. You know, for me, I think, you know, we talk about this forever in sales, right? If you want to close deals and you want to connect with people, you've got to build relationships with people, right? And you can lose out business 
regardless of your price and your product or service, based on the relationship that people have with you. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I had um, a woman from a health insurance company come the other day to set up my health insurance because now mm. I'm a, a solo a solopreneur, so I need my own health insurance mm. because mm. I had spoken as a keynote speaker for her organization before. Mm. So I knew a little bit about the DNA as so a she whole. she was selling to you or from you were the selling ma- to her? No, she's selling to me okay, my health insurance, you. right? Gotcha. So I had seen the organization from the briefings I had. I saw the organization from speaking en masse, but I wanted to know how each cog in the wheel felt. Mm. I was sincerely interested and that's a big thing that I think is really hard for a lot of salespeople because of the volume of people you have to get to know to convert sales. For sure. It's a lot. Mm. Um, but I would love for anybody watching to try 20%. Try mm. 20% of the people you're dealing with. Try to connect with them authentically. Mm. So she was speaking to me and I could see that she was a bit flustered. I could see that her energy was a bit agitated and I said, look, um, how, how are you? Like, what's happening in, in your life right now? And we talked, obviously, about family illness because I was filling out my plan. And she then went into 30 minutes of our one hour mm. um, about her current family situation where she's handling a, a father who's on his last days mm. and all this stuff. And so we connect on something very profound. Mm. But she also had to risk something, too, as the salesperson that I would still buy that insurance from her despite Mm. her revealing this about her personal life. So there is a risk in vulnerability, Mm -hmm. but it is a very direct way to making connection quickly. Yeah, and I think that you know what we're all looking for is like a relatability too, right? Yeah. Like I like I like I get you, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, you know, anyone out there who wants to sell me anything, if you tell me that you love tennis and your favorite player is Roger Federer, yeah. Open pocketbook, all right? I mean, that this is just who I am. Like I just am obsessed with the sport. I love Roger yeah, Federer. Yeah. So if people kind of want to engage with me and they just ask me any kind of question like that, like, mm-hmm. you know, hey, did you watch the, the Paris Indoor? Or, you know, have you been to Melbourne for the Australian Open? Or anything like that, yeah. I'm gonna get interested in them yeah. because they're actually interested in me, right? And well, I, you hope that they are. Well, I hope so, right? But even if but you know how it. you can tell if a co- connection's authentic? Mm. It's reciprocal. So mm. anytime you have a relationship where somebody is hounding one party and the other party is not. That's how, uh, reciprocating, that's how you can tell, really. Sorry, how do you mean, so, so. So, for example, for bit, example, yeah. that person's trying to sell you something, they're yeah. coming to you, yeah. and they are um, trying three different questions to get to the Roger Federer question. Okay. And Tom's kind of like, they're like, do you like sport? And you're, Tom's like, yeah. Do you like that? And, mm, mm, okay. and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not really football, tennis. Um, oh, do you like Roger Federer? So. Mm. If you are approaching somebody and yeah. they are not reciprocating, and that continues, so through, you're saying it has to be mutual. It right? has to be mutual right. to be authentic. I truly, yeah. truly believe that yeah. for sure. And I think sometimes it can come across as forced, right? Yes. So people really, you know, you know, fake, fake this human connection, and they're actually not not, ma- not yeah. making a human connection, right? Yeah. So they're just kind of saying their thing and like, oh, you like sports? Hey, me too. And you're like. Mm. I don't think you authentically mean that. Yes. And then I can see right through that. Yes. And it's very off-putting when that happens too. Totally off-putting because if anything, it's like a reverse, it's a a human disconnection. Yes. Because I'm just like, dude, you are so inauthentic, it's not even funny, right? It's dangerous. All right, Simone. So why don't we share if we can, um, you know, what are your top tips Mm -hmm. on how sales professionals and business owners can, can build you know, stronger human connections with, you know, with their customers, for example. Okay, well, you know, authentic connection. Um, I've had to learn this, not that I don't already know it. It's something that I've been able to do for a very long time, kind of naturally. Mm. But I wanted to learn how people who are not primed, like in a media environment that I was working in, actually have to live their everyday lives, like, Pivoting. For example, if I do a celebrity interview, like what we're, we're doing now, Tom mm. the Celebrity, mm. I know that we're primed for connection. I know mm. that we're placed close together. Mm. We'll be in a position where we have to talk in between the camera or not. So I was good in that environment, but I wanted to learn how people like taxi drivers, people who um, work with children with disabilities, for example, they have to go in every day. They cannot predict the situation and they have to authentically connect to achieve mm. their goals. So one of the ladies that I um, spoke to was a lady called Michelle who was a teacher at Grace Orchard, the autism school. And this is one of the biggest tips I learned from interviewing her is that you have to connect with people how they prefer. 
in the modality that they prefer, not how you like to communicate. So a salesperson may go in and try and sell to someone um, using a whole bunch of brochures. We've all seen this before. Mm. Like they take out the kit and then they just make some annotations and they push that at someone. But the 75-year-old auntie in the heartlands wanting to buy um, that insurance or open that bank account, she might find that really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So you need to come in, do all the things that you've mentioned earlier on, right? Um, Building rapport. Mm. Then you're going to get a little bit of information. Mm. And from that information, you need to code switch. Right. So you're going to go, auntie prefers when I draw what financial plan she should have on a sheet with pictures. Right, right, right. So I learned this from this teacher because they use something called UDL, the Universal Design for Learning. And that learning method is all about finding out how these children on all different spectrums Mm. um, of the, uh, all different parts of the autism spectrum, Mm. how these children ingest information. Some prefer to play with a toy, some Mm -hmm. prefer a story, others prefer a group activity. And likewise, they communicate what they've learned, Mm. express their learning back in different ways. So we need to do the same to authentically connect because that's Mm. for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the robots can never outdo that on us. Mm. There's a generosity of spirit in making yourself uncomfortable in order to aid the connection with someone else. Mm that a robot can ever do. That's mm-hmm. linked to our humanity. So mm-hmm. connect with people yeah. how they prefer is my number one. My cool. I, I love that because, you know, one thing that we talk about in our sales training programs is we talk about, you know, the, the, the necessity to, to style flex, right? Yes. So to be able yes. to, to understand, you know, how do prospects like to receive information, right? Mm-hmm. So even, you know, we were talking about SOCO and what that stands for, right? Mm-hmm. Well, SOCO is also an acronym for four different communication styles. Yeah. You've got people that are more supportive, some who are open, some who are closed, mm-hmm. right? And some who are organized. So yeah. that's kind of how that works, right? So some people are high energy. They process information quickly. Um, they make decisions quickly. They're high energy. And some are just the opposite, right? Yes. And you look at kind of high sociability versus low, high dominance versus low. So to be able to really connect with someone, it sounds like you're saying you need to be able to understand how does that person take in information yeah. and how how can you connect with them in the way that they actually want to be related to, right? Absolutely, because otherwise you're, you're just filling auntie's Love cup that. and she's just not taking in right. anything. She's right. like, I'd not. And then you lose your connection time because mm. you've, she's already shut off to you. Oh, so yeah. your client's already not receptive. So I think that's um, that's a fantastic way to do things, but you must observe your client first. It's brilliant. You know, so one thing we talk about, you know, when we're talking to, to our, you know, uh, you know, customers and all that is to say, look, some people want all the information, right? They want the flip charts, they want brochures, yeah. they want catalogs, they want all the material and they want to consume it like a big old phone book, right? And they want to go through all of that stuff yes. and take their time. But then some people just want like, I'm that person. Three bullet points, right? Yes. That's kind of how like I make am. it easy for me. Yeah. Super easy. Like I don't need a lot of time. And then, and then some people will base their decisions based on facts. Yeah. And then some more based on this, right? How they feel. Yeah. So you need to be able to really understand kind of what's that communication style of your prospect and then style flex, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. hundred percent. Love it. Um, the other one is when you persist, it's hard to resist. And this is very relevant for sales. Like mm. you... So most of us are really great authentically connecting with people who are similar to us that we already Mm. get along with. But then those people that we're not in synergy with, it feels like a lot of hard work. But here is the big takeaway. Mm. Um, And it's, I I tell it in my speech, this story, my mom, my mom has a very um, serious degenerative disease where she, you know, has no concept of the days of the week or the times of the day. Um, and she forgot my father passed away already mm. and she could eventually forget who I am. Mm-hmm. And what it actually made me realize was if you have to make a connection, like this obviously struck a huge chord with me. I thought if you have to make a connection with your mother, the person who gave birth to you, and you have to fight for that connection, then honey, you can fight for any connection. I would say that to anybody who's listening or watching this. If, if a connection will profoundly change the quality of your life or the quality of the, the other person's life. Um, n- this is not even just to do with making a sale, right? Mm. Your effort is worth it. Mm. Like you need to go all out, even if you're like me and your heart is breaking, mm. like it is worth it. So when you persist, it's hard to resist. That's the foundational phrase. Please remember that. I love that yeah. one. And here's, and I love that. And you know, one of my favorite phrases that I use is similar, persistence overcomes resistance. 
right? So if you've got a situation where you know, a prospect is kind of resisting or you feel that there's some kind of attention there, you just got to persist. Yeah. You got to keep trying because that's where all the reward is, is that yes. making that effort, right? And that's the thing quite often. It's like your, your customer or prospect isn't the one who has to make that effort. Yes. That's what we have to realize. Like, they're not the ones that have to change. They don't have to persist. Yes. Like, it's, it's us that have to do it. They're, they have resistance, so we got to have that persistence, right? Mm -hmm. Love that, and, and it's worth it, right? It's absolutely worth it. Look, and when I say it could change the quality of your life, we're talking about feeding your own children and putting, mm. I mean, that's, at the end of the day, the motivator behind most people who go into a sales job is to provide for their families. Well, and, and how badly do you want it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, are you willing to fight for it? You know, a lot of people aren't. They'll just kind of like give up. Oh, this is hard. Yeah. Well, whoever said that sales was easy? Like, Simone's not saying that human connection is easy. It's not. It's actually very difficult. It is very difficult when you don't naturally get along with someone. Right. It's hard work. So you got to really, you know, fight for it and struggle for it because you, you think it's that important. You know, I know yeah. in, my, in my case, you know, my mother and I have not always had the best relationship. Right? But my dad passed away about five years ago. He had Parkinson's disease for about 10 years. The last three years of his life were very challenging. And, you know, that whole experience, you know, could have, and it, I've seen this happen in families, split people apart. Illness has split families apart. It baffles me as to why, but it, it helped bring my mom and I closer together, right? And, and we, we've had to, and the relationship hasn't always been easy, but I've had to resist, right? Or like persist to overcome any resistance that was there because yeah. I've already lost one parent. Absolutely. I'm going to lose this one because she, she's going That's to pass life. away. That's yeah. how life is. And I don't want this to be how it all ended. So it's sort of like someone has to step up and, and make that human connection. And I'll tell you, after doing that, it's like night and day. And it changes the quality of life um, also for your kids because they get a better relationship between their father and their grandmother. Now that is a so huge motivator. That's a huge motivator. Right? Yeah. Because I never wanted you know our kids to grow up not knowing their grandparents, not knowing their grandmother, Especially like, you or why is daddy, the the yeah, world, why is, right? why, why, why is this daddy and granny not get along? That's never come up because that's not an issue because we do get along, right? So you got to work, now, it's not easy. There's always moments, there's family dynamics, you know what I'm talking about, there's always going to be some of that, but it's just like, for me now, honestly, Simone, it's just like, pfft, I just let it go. Yeah. Because, like, but maybe it's not that, important. So I think that's also interesting, too. Maybe persistence in this way is actually um, choosing the higher higher road. Totally. So, so sometimes choosing the higher road actually aids connection. Yeah. 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 And you know what's really cool is, and I like what you said about, you know, human connection is about reciprocity. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't work if there isn't that reciprocity. Yeah. And I'm a big believer that, like, if, if I change how I relate to you. Yes. You're going to change yeah, how you relate to process. me. Absolutely. Totally, right? And yeah. it's sort of like if you've got two people at loggerheads. Exactly. And one decides, you know what? I'm going to stop being a jerk. Let's see how that plays out. Yep. Well, now if someone continues being a jerk, but the other person's not, well, you got an even bigger jerk around you, right? So people are like, whoa, so things have changed. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like what Gandhi says, be the change you want in the world. And so many of us complain about things and people. Salespeople all the time are complaining, oh, my customers don't open. I hear that all the time. My customers don't communicate with me. They don't tell me anything. They don't disclose anything. They never give me information. Yeah. They're not forthright. And I'm just sort of like, well, how are you presenting yourself to these people? Are you trustworthy, right? To me, that's my favorite word, trustworthy. Like, are you worthy of trust? Why would they trust you? Why would a customer tell a sales rep their biggest challenges but, if they think you're a scam and a scoundrel? But I definitely think that people, um, it, it's like a chicken the egg situation because we need trust for connection. So mm. I, I think, yeah, connection, trust go hand in hand. Totally. Brings us very nicely to my third, um, third tip. Um, because you were talking about the relationship with your mom and um, once we've done all of these tips that Tom and I have been talking about. What you have is um, a hopefully a functioning, healthy mm. relationship with somebody that you actually care about, whether they be your client or whether they be a family member. And this is the baseline for all the work that I've done. It doesn't matter about the money that you're trying to get and all of these other things. I understand we live in a material city mm. and we live in a material world. Um, but really profound, authentic human connection is about how you made people feel. Mm. So 
if you think of your circle of friends or friends you might have used to have where you would feel exhausted every time you were mm. um, with that person, a bit of an energy vampire, or whether you're with <laughs> someone who is uplifted, the sales rep who made their client feel fabulous, mm. the sales rep that made their client feel seen and listened to is the one that will continue to have that client come back to them. And that's totally. that's what human connection is all about, how you made people feel. Oh, Simone, I love that. It's sort of like, you know, that quote by Maya Angelou. And I'm, just, and I'm just gonna, you know, rip it apart. But she says something like, you know, people will forget what you said or what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel.